What's up, you guys? This is Los from the Big Retro Show, and today I'm going to be playing some Popeye for the arcades. 1982 Nintendo Classic. So let's get it started here. This is the four quarters challenge, so I will have four quarters to see how far I can get in this game. So let's go ahead and put our quarters in. There's four, and away we go. <laughs> Of course, Popeye is one of the best cartoons ever created, guys. And to go with to go with it, they created this game. It's one of the very first uh, games to feature licensed characters, and it was super fun. This arcade cabinet was a staple in the arcades. Couldn't go into any arcade. Oh, he just—he kind of like just tickled me. Keep your paws to yourself, Bluto. But anyways, yeah, this was one of the staples of the arcades, and the cabinet was absolutely beautiful. It was blue, and it had a bunch of uh, Popeye artwork. And how could you not play it? How could you not sink at least one quarter into it? Which I often did whenever I would uh, be in the arcades. Of course, um, this doesn't have a, a jump button. All, ha all you can do is, is, is punch. And the goal of this game, obviously, is to uh, catch all the hearts that olive oil is throwing below. And as you can see, as I get a heart in the upper left-hand corner of the, of the screen, you can see that he got me again son of a bitch um, in the upper left hand corner of the screen you can see a house and the hearts are filling up there it's a pretty simple game but it's, it's, it's challenging at the same time obviously this was an arcade game so you're gonna you're gonna get some level of challenge when you're playing these arcades and that's because they wanted to take your quarters back then so for people who are new to the channel, the whole premise of the four quarters challenge is that obviously I have four quarters to see how far I can get in the game. And the reason I do this challenge is it's a, it's a tribute to childhood. Because back in the day when I was a kid, I would uh, assist my mother in doing the family's laundry at the laundromat. And as a reward, she would give me a dollar to go mess around at the arcades. It was a pizza parlor right next to the uh, right next to the laundromat. It was called Shaky's Pizza, and uh, it, it was a small, relatively small arcade, but it had some awesome games in it. Knew he was gonna get me there. And that's a game over. That's my quarter one. Quarter one. So let's go ahead and get my second quarter in there. And there's no continues, man. This was old school arcade goodness here, guys. No continues. You know, you either were good or you weren't, and you either got far in the game or you didn't. You know, there was none of this hand-holding in the arcades. Obviously, they wanted to take your quarters, so they weren't going to give you a second chance. I love the way that the, um, the character models are, are, are crafted in this game. I mean, Popeye really looks like Popeye, Bluto looks like Bluto, Olive Oil looks like Olive Oil. It's all pretty cool. If you guys grew up watching the cartoons, you'll know that, um, well, for those of you, of you who don't know about it, Popeye was the Sailor Man. And um, 
Olive oil was his girl. I don't really know exactly what he saw in her, but you know, I guess love there's love is available for everyone on this planet. So, uh, anyways, Bluto was always hot for olive oil too, and many many times he wanted to uh, to date her. She didn't want to have anything to do with him, and so. Um, Popeye was a smaller guy, obviously. Bluto was just this big neckbeard dude. <laughs> and uh, he wanted to date Olive Oil, but she wasn't having it. And so Bluto, to get revenge on on Popeye, would beat his ass. But <laughs> the thing is, though, that Popeye had a secret weapon. And this was totally, totally a marketing thing from uh, spinach farmers in the country. I think, anyways. But um, to get buffed and to get his power, he would eat a can of spinach. And then after he eating his spinach, dude, he would whoop the shit out of Bluto. And, uh, you know, every episode was kind of the same of uh, Bluto and Popeye fighting, much like they're doing here. And uh, Popeye would always get his spinach, eat a spinach, and then just be a superhuman sailor, and uh, basically beat Bluto's ass. And sure, it was, a, it was a repetitive kind of a cartoon, but um, we loved it as kids. Oh, it fell right on top of me. Alright, let's see if I can concentrate a little bit. I've been jabbing and Talking to you guys. This game requires full concentration. I know sooner or later I'm gonna have to bust out the spinach against uh, this fool. Yep. On to stage three. So Popeye was so, like, popular, especially with everyone who grew up in the 80s, that uh, they made a movie out of it. And none other than the famous, the excellent Robin Williams uh, was cast as Popeye. And it is an excellent movie. Excellent movie, guys. No, who doesn't make an appearance in this game so far is Wimpy. Wimpy was kind of like this fat dude in the in the Popeye universe who used to always beg for change to buy cheeseburgers. And he, his line would always be, I would gladly pay you uh, Wednesday for a hamburger Tuesday or whatever or whatever cheeseburger Tuesday. He was always he was always begging begging for change but yeah man there is a <laughs> there's one specific Popeye episode that I remember watching as a kid and that was Popeye at, uh, Popeye was pitted against Bluto and Bluto was kind of like Simbad and he had his 40 thieves. But it was an awesome, awesome cutscene. Oh, I gotta get that before time runs out. And I rescued olive oil. Yeah, buddy. Back to the, um, and I guess this just loops around. Now, this game got ports on the Atari 2600, and I believe on the Atari 5200 and the ColecoVision. But back in the day, it was a lot easier than the, than the arcades. And that's maybe because they didn't need your quarters anymore. They already got your your hard-earned money. I believe that was quarter... Oh. It's 
go ahead and put my initials in real quick. Yeah, but we used to play it on the Atari 2600, and it was a lot of fun. We, we spent a lot of time playing that game. I think it was the Atari 5200 that I used to play on it. Play with it. All right, so I have two more credits, and of course, I start at the beginning all over again. So this is one of these kind of ob obscure titles. Nobody's really heard about it, um, unless you grew up in the arcades like I did. So I doubt that this will ever get a release on a arcade one-up cabinet. Although it would be cool, it would be cool to see this and maybe other games of yesteryear on there. But you never know how they choose these things in the uh, arcade one-up world. So I don't know if that will happen. God, seeing the scores up there and being able to input my name kind of reminds me of what a big deal the scores were back in the day. Have you guys seen that uh, documentary King of Kong? And how Billy Mitchell and Steve Weeb, uh, Weeby or whatever were going after the record in Donkey Kong? <laughs> they were just like masters of the game. And back then... Ugh, that was careless. Um, back then, the scores meant so much, and they had Twin Galaxies out there kind of recording everything. And um, nowadays, like, the scores... Nobody gives a damn about the scores. It's like... It's more about speed runs, and who can who can do no death runs, and, and that, that wasn't fair, by the way, just now. Who can do speed runs, who can do no death runs... Like, that's what matters nowadays, not the scores. And I was just thinking, like, wow, we were so, like, simple back in the day. But, yeah, somebody needs to do a death run on, on a Popeye. So this, this cabinet was, in, this game was a Nintendo game. And, um, you know, I personally, I think it would be cool if, if Nintendo busted out an updated version of this game. All the Popeye fans out there, you know, but I don't think it's going to happen considering the way that they've treated their other franchises. Like, for example, Metroid. There's still not a Metroid on the Switch. And how long are we... We're about to start the uh, next generation of consoles and there's still no Metroid. You know, there's still no update to punch out. And, and I just have to... I have to call foul on that because... These are franchises that stand the test of time. And maybe Popeye isn't one of them, obviously. Um, but they're, you know, the way that they've handled their franchises is really, really, really bad. They need to, you know, they need to step it up. But yeah, an arcade cabinet like this, oh gosh. I don't even want to think about how much it's worth um, in this day and age, simply because I, you know, I don't, I don't know how popular this cabinet was. I mean, I remember gro I remember playing it in the arcades, and I had fun with it. Jeez, um, I had fun with it, but I don't know exactly how popular it was. You know, I don't know if. Uh, there's a bunch of people out there who, who are just fanatical about this, this arcade cabinet. I mean, that'd be cool if there were, but um, I don't know. I just don't know enough about it. Super, super cheap. I better just not wait for him. Or I'll get mopped up. Yeah, man. But if you guys remember Popeye, let me know in the comments. And if you have... Oh, I thought that... <laughs> that, was, that was dumb. I thought that that was a note. A musical note. Anyways, guys. I hope you enjoyed this uh, four quarters edition of Popeye. This Popeye's edition of four quarters and um 
yeah, comment down below if you liked it. Comment down below if you didn't like it. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down and subscribe. Till the next one, guys. I will see you on the Big Retro Show. Peace. <laughs>